Yeah. So, yeah, it's basically what Europathic was, was a long time ago, uh, back in like 2002, Three. 2003. Uh, yeah, 2003. Yep. Three, the we, bar, yep. We basically started up a uh, sister company over in uh, the UK. Mm-hmm. I wanted to read this here, though. Um, this was wrote uh, two months after I've been in Europe. I actually put up this post on uh, europathic.com. <laughs> it was like a write-up, and, and it kind of like... It really, I feel like, I haven't read this whole thing, but I feel like it captures the moment of what it was like, uh, the, the enthusiasm we had when we were just starting out, like really believing in this, like this could work. But anyway, here's uh, here's something I wrote just real quick, if I could share this with you. Uh, what up, y'all? It's been a hectic two months, to say the least. I flew over here from America, cl- closely following my boy, Netmaster Gordon, with the full intent to start up a European branch of Psychopathic Records. And with the help of three of my English homies, young Peter, Steve Extra, and Paul ATF Barkley, we have done just that. The office started out as a slightly run-down office warehouse complex that we quickly transformed into posh executive suites. We, we replaced all the carpets, <laughs> tore out the old floors, and even replaced the doors. The landlord came in to see what the hell was going on and just about shit himself. He then handed us the keys to the unrented building next to ours. I guess he was hoping we would fix that up as well. <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then took off on a six-month vacation to South Africa. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, uh, is. No doubt on money from the three-year rent advance we gave him. Oh, wow. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, three-year advance. Yeah. Uh, One thing about the building that he failed to mention to us before we moved in was that the heat didn't work. And according to the British Gas Company, there was nothing they could do about it for three months. It's going to be a cold winter over here at Psychopathic, (laughs) but nothing will put a damper on all the plans we have currently in the works. Uh, I have moved into a nice little two-bedroom apartment. There is a small shopping center below my apartment that I like to refer to as the Square. Yeah. That is completely (laughs) overrun by Kev's. Kevs. Oh, yeah, Kevs. <laughs> Holy shit. I forgot about Kevs. Yep. I am not exactly sure what Kevs are, <laughs> except they like to drag themselves, uh, they like to drape themselves in the infamous burb clothing and scatter uh, light cockroaches, oh, and scatter like cockro- cockroaches in light at the first sign of any type of danger, like loud noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This square is also completely graffitied out, which makes no sense because the neighborhood is very quaint and crime-free. I guess it is the Kev's way to establish control of the square as they <laughs> mill about scavenging for burb. All right, so Burberry is, uh, uh, you know, I think we need to explain this a little bit. It's kind of like this checkered cloth pattern that uh, it, yeah. it, it became illegal to wear in England. You're because kidding. Yeah, because, uh, you know, it, it was basically... Uh, people in wearing Burberry were targeted because they were uh, known as hooligans. Like it was typically the uh, people at soccer games that would wear the Burberry. Wow. They would start fights and oh, yeah. and carry on and just uh, like cause gang profiling. Yeah, exactly. And it's all it's all based oh, on the Burberry. Yeah, yeah, there, there it is. is. Yeah. It's basically a plaid, <laughs> right? Yeah, but um, it's a specific kind of plaid. And there was like fake Burberry where they would have like an extra B. Or an extra R, right? And uh, <laughs> you know, Burberry. And believe me when I say they do control the square. The police <laughs> and locals avoid the place like cancer. As at any given time, there's like twenty or thirty of these Burb refugees in the square, lying around wearing all the fake Burberry they like. <laughs> then every once in a while, someone will accidentally drop a Burb scarf or something, and the Kevs will just lunge for it like a pack of feeding piranhas. <laughs> When oh. when they scu- when the scuffle is finished, whatever they were fighting for is just gone. Apparently eaten whole by the starving calves <laughs> who need the burb nourishment to survive. Oh, shit. All right, hold on. Okay, so there's more. Um, besides the entertainment of the square, uh, I also find the TV tax man to be very amusing. <laughs> oh shit! You know what I'm talking about. I do know the yeah. guys that ride around in the vans with the radar devices that locate where TVs are. They then come to your house threatening to take you to court if you don't register your TV and pay the TV tax, which is about 110 pounds a year. In America, we have nothing like this, so you have to understand how unique and intrusive this act appears. So my plan is to have a small junk TV on hand, and if the TV uh, tax man appears at my door and asks if I have a TV, I will then take the TV and smash it on the 
front porch and tell him no. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't work, then I will give the Kevs in the square my TV, and then when the TV tax man tries to collect from them, I will all I will just slap a piece of super glue Burberry to the back <laughs> and watch as the havoc unfolds. <laughs> I personally want to say that I am waging my own personal war against the TV tax man and, and what he represents. <laughs> now, uh, to, to this credit, I never once paid the TV tax the whole year I was over there. And we had a TV not only in the office, but also in my apartment. Oh, and, 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 but I never answered the door. <laughs> to any stranger. Anybody <laughs> knocking on the door, I did not answer the door. Well, I looked through the part people. Is, that would be it. Because yeah. they were just like, well, I'll just not answer the door. Right, like exactly. that would that would be enough to stump. Them. That's it. They'd you know, they can't like, do nothing. They can't b- break your door in. You know, it's like, I can't. What, <laughs> he never. You know, and they'd be like, "What do you think, Paul? Our records, What's your thought on that? Three hasn't yeah. paid, but it'd be like, well, what are we going to do? You know, yep. he didn't answer the door. We can't do anything. <laughs> okay, another another fresh ass thing I noticed since I have been here is the smart cars, which ironically enough are now in America, uh, <laughs> that are cruising all around like flies. These miniature cars have got to be one of the freshest inventions of all time. <laughs> Just the other day, I was crossing the street when suddenly I felt a pain in my leg. I looked down, and there was a smart car wrapped around my leg with the front end all blew out from the collision. <laughs> <laughs> the guy driving then peeled the roof off like an orange and started screaming at me to watch where the fuck I was going. He then crumpled up the rest of the car and threw it in the trash bin <laughs> and pulled another car out of his bag and zoomed away. <laughs> Simply fucking amazing. So in short, we are here now. Burberry attire, smart cars, TV tax men's and all. And we have invested a lot of time and money to make sure that we are going nowhere soon. The office furniture is in place. The security systems operational. Warehouse shelving installed. <laughs> bank accounts open. US, UPS shipping ready to go. Wow, so much hope. Uh, <laughs> vehicles purchased for street team activities oh. and a juggalo hit squad ready for action. It is as if we are po- poised on the brink of war, ready for anything. We have crazy huge plans for psychopathic Europe, Europe, and with the team we have assembled, expect nothing but flavor. It might take a few months to get it fully on our feet, but when we do, there will be plenty of tours, signings, uh, parties, and even gatherings in the near future. We are fully prepared to make this happen, no matter what the cost. The ICP Shangri-La tour was only the beginning. The wait is finally over, and Psychopathic has landed. What? <laughs> oh man! 